We was the evolution of the street gangs of New York. We the pioneers of this polo shit. Ain't nobody do this shit before us, not the way we did it. We the reason it's all over the world. I was somebody always inspired by fashion. I always wanted to be fly. I was born when hip hop was born. So I was able to see everything as it developed and as it evolved. So I always evolved with the styles of the fashion within hip hop. I remember wearing name buckles and all that at nine years old and getting my first pair of pro Ked sneakers and how I felt just having them on and how everybody else looked at me for having this on. You know, these were items of respect and gave you social status in your neighborhood. New York in the late 80s, it was crazy, chaotic. It was wild, especially for, you know, the areas of Brooklyn where low lives came from. Killings, shootings, robberies, like, you know, the crime rate was out of control and robbery was always a way to survive. The attraction to boost Ralph Lauren, it was just, it was his turn to get stolen. You know what I mean? Because everything got stolen. Everything was based on just us being poor and our parents not really providing us with the things we wanted. They might have gave us the things we needed, but the things we wanted couldn't be afforded. You know, it's not Ralph Lauren's fault. We didn't really target him from that sense. He was just part of our evolution of all the things we were already doing. Yo, my name is Ski, the Godfather of Boosters. <laughs> Yo, so you black nigga. Bionic boots. Your bionic boots. Big Victor Long. Undisputed thief. So once polo came into play, you seen the variety that they kept bringing. I used to see my man Beck Live come around, throwing up the big flags and things like that. Like these are the things that used to inspire us. We was inspiring each other to actually come back with some high-end stuff from Fifth Avenue and wear it in the projects, it made you somebody, man. Not only was you fly, you had to be somebody to wear these things because they'll get taken from you if you didn't have a certain status or certain form of respect. The formation of Low Lives, which was in 88, you see these dudes fly as hell, you see us fly as hell. It only made sense that we walked down the block together. When motherfucking Ralphie kids from St. John's in Utica and the motherfucking Marcus Garbage Polo United Shoplifters Association came together, we unified the motherfucking titles of taking it. Just coming through the way people used to react when they saw us was one of the main things that had us together. We loved the reaction from the people on the train, the girls, the girls go crazy. They see all these dudes fly at one time, everybody. Yo, hi, you want the over If I get some money. Woo -y. Woo -y. Hey. Oh, Instead of being looked at as hoodlums and thieves, we were more than that. We were like Fight Club meets The Runway. In the ghetto. Nobody's smiling, dude. Once everything formed, it was fun, it was fly, but then it got crazy and deadly all at the same time. You know, it was like a package deal. Just like anything that comes with fame. You get the people who love you, and then you get the people who hate you for the same reasons that those people love you. On the train, you'll get robbed. Polo Goose, you could get murdered. There's times I would come out my house, somebody would come get me and be like, yo, there's niggas out here coming to try to rob her. And I'll go outside and I'll see 20 motherfuckers waiting. Times they run up and jump out of cars with guns and everything just to come stick niggas up for the polo. When I started making my music, for all the people that died when all of this began and all that, 
I made sure they were never forgotten. I mentioned them all the time in everything I did. So a lot of those people who died are just as famous as all of us today. Yo, facts, man. What's it like being a gangster in the garden? Everybody know who Fats Capone is. Everybody knows who Pumpkin is. They know who Boost and Billy is. Even after they were gone for so long, they were always included in everything we said and did and mentioned. So to me, they live yeah, forever. This is uh, Marco Polo. Mark, would you like to make a comment? Yeah. What kind of symbol is that? K-Swiss. And what kind of jacket you got on? Yes. What kind of pants? Yeah. All right. You also forgot the K-Swiss. Hold on, let me yeah. zoom in on that. Once I became an artist and an entertainer and started making noise musically, then the story really spread. You know, chapters started growing in all these different countries. The low life story spread globally. Nice merchandise going for the best offer. Life size portraits and stolen Gore-Tex. Cookies, crest, horses, Ralph Lorenz, orphans. I influenced my whole family. My mother wore polo my sisters, my children, everybody, and almost everyone in low lifes had the same effect on the entire families. It feels accomplished to us, like we feel we did something. Instead of being looked at as hoodlums and thieves, you know, in the past, through that, you know, we see something we created live longer than we actually gonna live or live beyond our time and pass down for generations and it's, it's become traditional, you know? It's become religious in some sense. I never in a million years would have believed what we did back then would become a subculture to spread all over the world. Whether it's open casket or closed casket, all I ask is bury me with the low When it's my time to go at gravesite, I want Ralph Lauren to sign the stone. Put my picture up in the low mansion, even old white ladies will be like he was so handsome.